What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel, and I'm just going to cut right to it, guys. Tom Brady, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He is unretiring, and he is returning to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for his 23rd NFL season. That is hard to believe that he's been playing for that long. Uh, but when he retired, um, about a month and a half ago, I was a little surprised, honestly, that he retired because it didn't look like on the field that he lost a step. He still had a lot of core offensive pieces in place uh, to come back, run it back, try to get another championship with Tampa Bay. Obviously, his first year with the Buccaneers, they did go all the way and win the Super Bowl. Last year, pretty successful season, but by you know the Buccaneers' standards with Tom Brady on their team coming off the Super Bowl, it was Super Bowl or bust. They didn't get it done. They were dealing with some injuries in the playoffs. Uh, Chris Godwin was... Um, not playing in the postseason. Uh, Antonio Brown uh, retired in the middle of uh, a regular season game against the Jets, so he obviously wasn't there for the postseason. So it's kind of just a letdown season. And I thought Tom Brady, he was going to run it back at least one more time because, you know, we didn't really see him lose a step on the field. He still looked amazing. He was putting up numbers. He was getting the ball to his weapons. Uh, they were winning games. But ultimately, he decided to call it quits. I was a little bit surprised. And honestly, I was a little bit sad because whether you love him or hate him, you got to admire the guy, uh, widely regarded as the GOAT, um, and he's one of my favorite players to watch, and he really has been a staple of the NFL since I started watching football. Uh, ever since I started watching, he's been in the league just crushing it, so it was sad to see him walk away. Part of me thought he might come back, but part of me also wondered if he would do the whole retire, unretire thing. Uh, I'm not saying this is a Brett Favre situation, but... That kind of I, I was kind of wondering, would he retire then unretire? Well, turns out he did. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about what that means for fantasy because this is a fantasy football channel. But I just had to kind of, you know, give my thoughts on the whole situation because this is crazy. Um, first of all, for my dynasty team, I tweeted it out that I wasn't cutting him when he retired. I still haven't cut him. He's my starting quarterback for next year, and he should be a candidate to be your starting quarterback uh, for next year as well. Uh, for his 23rd NFL season. So before we look at the future, let's take a look at the past here. This is what Tom Brady has done over the course of his career over the last couple of years in Tampa Bay. You know, the questions were, is father time finally catching up to him? New team, how's this going to work? Well, he just got himself a Super Bowl and he put up two 40, yard, or, uh, 40 touchdown seasons last year, throwing for 5,300 yards. Granted, there was that one extra game, but still that is mad impressive to put up 5,300 yards even with that extra game. That is crazy. So on the field, statistically, eye test, winning-wise, leadership-wise, anything you can really think of, the guy is still an elite quarterback. Um, and I think he still has it. Obviously, you know, we'll have to see what actually happens. But last year, taking a look at his game log, uh, he was pretty much very consistent, uh, put up explosive games, was quite consistent as well. Obviously, week four in New England, returning to that stadium where he played his whole career. The weather wasn't the greatest. You know, he put up a, uh, a, a dud, okay? It happens. You know, this is a weird game. There's a lot that went into it. Um, looking at the end of the year, he did kind of tail off a little bit against the Saints. That offense just got shut down. I remember it was just a really weird like what just happened type of thing, but it did happen. It's sort of like how the Saints, that same team, kind of shut down that Packers offense week one, but then they bounced back and, you know, we forgot about that game. So sometimes games like that just happen. Um, and then against Carolina, uh, didn't have a great game. Uh, I believe he was missing Chris Godwin for that game. But other than that, you know, very good player, um, put up a lot of good points. And what do I expect moving forward? Well, for this offense, Tom Brady is obviously going to be a boost to this team. Uh, it was kind of expected that uh, Kyle Trask, who is sort of a uh, young, unknown type of player, he was going to kind of maybe move into that uh, starting quarterback role. Uh, maybe the team was going to bring in a veteran somehow. Uh, but either way, none of that matters. Tom Brady at the helm, that is the ideal situation for this team for fantasy. I don't think you're going to get much better than that. So what do I expect for Tom Brady? I expect him to be elite. I expect him to be a locked-in quarterback one. Um, you might be able to get him on the cheap if people still continue to discount him because of his age. Um, I would just take the bet that he's going to be good for fantasy. Uh, and if you look at the weapons around him, we'll kind of go through them one by one, but his main receiving core of Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, uh, they will be returning. Uh, Chris Godwin is on the franchise tag, so he will be re returning for at least this season. Mike Evans is still under contract. He's as rock solid as it comes for as a uh, wide receiver. And then Rob Gronkowski, the tight end um, that he played with uh, with the Patriots for so long, uh, came to Tampa Bay with him. 
it's kind of his thing you know Grant kind of goes where brady goes right so once brady retired people weren't really sure what's Grant gonna do uh there was some talk of him actually continuing to play but going to another team uh that would have been kind of an interesting thing to see but with brady back I personally would find it hard to believe that the team doesn't somehow make it a thing where Gronk also returns and plays with Brady. Uh, but going through these positions one by one here, I think Chris Godwin will continue to be a good weapon. You saw what he did last year. Um, with Mike Evans and Gronk there, he's going to have some down games just in terms of consistency with all those weapons there. It's kind of hard to pinpoint, you know, who's going to get the ball each week because there's so many targets to go around, especially if it's a game where maybe they're not throwing the ball as much there's going to be limited uh targets to go around but that's kind of fantasy wide receivers in general they're going to be inconsistent so i i'm not saying you know chris godwin is a locked in wide receiver one but sort of as like a wide receiver two type of guy um i would be feel pretty confident with him wide receiver two if you can get him as a wide receiver three that's incredible uh and you know he'll have his games he'll have his good games so he's coming off the injury we'll have to see how he looks at the start of the year but um, if he comes back healthy, once he's in the offense integrated, it should just be back to business as usual. Like it was the last couple of years, uh, with Tampa Bay and that offense for Mike Evans. I mean, what can we say about Mike Evans? Can we take a look? Can we just admire here? His stats every single year, over a thousand yards. He's cut it close a thousand one, 1006, but I mean, you know, he's still got it. He's still um he's still with tom brady this year you can look at the touchdown numbers he put up the last couple of years with brady 13 and 14 what do i expect out of um mike evans i don't necessarily expect him to be a league winning type of player or anything like that um not like a top top three potential type wide receiver but i do expect him to have at least a thousand yards like he has literally every season of his career and i know touchdowns are kind of hard to predict but as long as Tom Brady and that offense are firing on all cylinders, uh, he should be used heavily in the red zone uh, and get a lot of touchdowns. So double-digit touchdowns is not crazy to expect. Obviously, you know, touchdown regression is a thing. Um, and just, you know, it, it just kind of, it's a game, right? They're playing the game. It's going to be hard to predict exactly where the ball is going to go in the end zone. But Mike Evans has that skill set and the offense should be good. So he definitely will have scoring opportunities. Gronk. Missed quite a few games last year, but when he played, he was absolutely awesome. He was a locked-in tight end, one that you could just start each and every week, set and forget it for the most part. Um, obviously, great start to the season, missed some games, came back, and was pretty much great. Obviously, you know, most tight ends are going to have some down weeks as he had in weeks 15 and 16, but, you know, the his big weeks will more than make up for that as long as he, you know, doesn't lose a step, um, which, you know, he's, he's also getting pretty old. He's 32. Uh, he doesn't quite look like the same player that he once was, but it doesn't really matter. The rapport he has with Brady um, and just his ability to somehow just make plays, even though physically he doesn't necessarily look like the same player, he still is able to put up numbers in that offense. So those are kind of the main receiving options I want to talk to talk about. Um, I expect things pretty much to just be status quo, just like they have the last couple of years. Uh, when we're talking about the running game here, uh, the running back position for the Buccaneers was very valuable for two reasons. One, the offense is just great. When you're on a good offense, you're going to have sustained drives. You're going to have scoring opportunities. If the team is winning, they're going to be able to run the ball a little bit more in the second half than they otherwise would if they were losing, right? So that's the main reason that the running back position was valuable for the Bucs. And another reason is that they just gave the running back position pretty much entirely to Leonard Fournette. It was definitely a lead back type of situation. It wasn't really much of a committee. Obviously, every team uses some type of committee. They'll get, you know, a change of pace back in there once in a while. But for the most part, Leonard Fournette was a workhorse and he was involved in the passing game. You can look at his target numbers here. Seven, four, three, five, five, six, four, five, nine, six, eight, eight, seven, seven. That is amazing for a fantasy running back, especially in any PPR format. You can look what he did for fantasy. He was extremely valuable. He was a running back one for your team that you could put in there, set it and forget it. So I expect the position to still be valuable. Um, ultimately, it comes down to what they do with that position. So if they bring Leonard Fournette back and he's kind of just the main guy there, um, I think he'll still be good for fantasy, taking advantage of that elite offense, so hopefully continuing to see targets through the air, which is what really made him especially valuable, and seeing a lot of rushing work on the ground. So Fournette is back, 
and they don't really bring any other competition in. It's not a committee. I expect him to be great. If it's another lead running back, same type of thing. I expect him to be valuable for fantasy just because of the offense. And especially if that player is using a pass catching role, that only improves it even more. If it is a type of committee, um, I still think, you know, there will be valuable games for fantasy. The position as a whole will be valuable. But just like with any committee, it's going to be hard to kind of figure out whose week is it going to be? Uh, how are they going to use the committee this week? So um, that'll be one thing to think about. But for the most part, it should be valuable. Also, Bruce Arians, the head coach that has kind of been uh, leading this offense. Um, great offensive mind by uh, by many eyes in the NFL. He will be returning as well to continue coaching this team. So pretty much it's kind of a situation where the offense is elite. Um, everyone, all the major pieces are returning. Uh, if you look at the free agents for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ryan Jensen, a key offensive lineman, is a free agent. Um, it's been kind of wishy-washy on if he's going to return or go somewhere else. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him leave, but now that Brady's back, maybe he comes back and tries to run it back. Who knows? Uh, Gronk, I expect them to try to get him back. And Fournette is a free agent, so they'll have to figure out what to do with him. Also, just a kind of continue with the running game. Ronald Jones is also a free agent. I I don't think they'll make it a priority to bring him back. If they do, I don't think he'll be the lead running back, but whoever the lead running back is is going to be going to be valuable for fantasy unless they're just absolutely dreadful. And even if they are dreadful, they'll still probably fall in the end zone and get enough, you know, catches to be relevant. But uh there are some defensive pieces that they have to think about as well. Jason Pierre-Paul, Dominican Sue, um Goldston, there's this, you know, Richard Sherman, I, he might not come back. So there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces. Carlton Davis. Um, so if the defense is worse, that could just be better for the offense. The offense might have to keep up a little bit more. But either way, I think the offense will be fine. Now, the only real concern for Tom Brady and this offense is that father time will finally catch up with Tom Brady. It happens to every quarterback. The person I think of the most is two people. I think about Brett Favre coming to my Minnesota Vikings, Skull Vikings, uh, almost bringing us to the Super Bowl. He comes back to run it back one more year, and he just clearly doesn't have it anymore. The other player player I think about is Tom Brady, or not Tom Brady, Peyton Manning with Denver. Um, how he went in there, just lit the world on fire. It was just one of the most electric offenses you could ever think of. And then he comes back another year, and he just has a noodle arm, can't get it done, just looks dreadful. So that could always happen. It seems to happen with pretty much every quarterback where they eventually fall off a cliff. Um it could happen with Brady, but at this point, I am done betting against Tom Brady. He's 44 years old, but you could have said literally when he was 38, 39, 40, oh, the end is coming. He's going to fall off a cliff. And if you did that, you just watched him score fantasy points against you. So uh, he's got the weapons. He's got the famili familiarity with the offense. Um, and I really don't see any reason for this to be anything other than amazing for fantasy unless he does hit that wall. But well, like I said, I'm not betting it. I'm not betting against Tom Brady at this point. Because if if you bet on Tom Brady, and he really this year just doesn't go well for him, you kind of just live with it. You know, the you you kind of have to expect that. You know, maybe he will have that final bad season at some point. But I don't think he's going to go super high in drafts. So you can probably get him at a reasonable uh, draft cost. And um, if he does hit, which I expect he should be a solid quarterback for your fantasy team. All right. I thought I'd just hop on here quick and uh, give my thoughts on Tom Brady. Nothing too groundbreaking, pretty much just to wrap it all up that I expect the offense to continue to be good. The receiving options that he's had there and that have, have been good. I expect them to continue to be good. And as long as father time doesn't finally catch up with Tom Brady and stop him in his tracks, um, it should just be status quo. Uh, and as you can see, he's proven it for literally over two decades that uh you should bet on tom brady so anyways that's gonna do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it make sure to drop a like subscribe to the channel i'll talk to you guys later peace out